many issues associated with uh, international cooperation for water monitoring. I think that the important part of this, uh, the motion that's associated with um, this workshop, this is motion number 29, which, which should be in your handout, uh, is that it's not just the water bird monitoring for water bird's sake, but also for sound management. And I, I think I should also add that for sound policy as well. Uh, for us in the uh, Flyway Partnership, the information on, particularly on migratory bird birds and particularly migratory shorebirds um, in our Flyway is only, we've only just started to get the level of detailed information that's really highlighting the, the migration crisis and the critical stopover sites in the Red Sea that um, uh, are really affecting water bird declines and shorebird declines. And uh, you may know that IUCN recently published a situation analysis of the status of, of tidal flats in the East Asian region. And part of that study looked at the information on, on migratory birds and found that there were some astounding declines in, in populations of a number of what were formerly thought to be quite common species. But now we're seeing not only species declines of, of up to 20, 26% in spoonbill sandpiper, but also uh, huge declines in, in species like great knot um, and, and bar-tail godwit. And we're also seeing shifts in migration patterns so that the migration is not the same as it was even 10 or 20 years ago. So I think this just highlights the importance of having good information using that kind of information for improved management and, and we're supporting a flyway site network in our, uh, in our flyway and also for policy related to, in this case, tidal flats management in, in the region. So, you know, I'm very happy to see this motion presented. It's a fairly, I think, straightforward and simple motion. It's not the intention of this workshop to debate uh, the details of the motion. There will be a contact group, I believe, tomorrow uh, on this motion, which I, which I encourage you all to attend. The format of this workshop will be a, a series of, of presentations on water bird monitoring, uh, on international cooperation, on conserving water birds, and then some future directions. And that those presentations will be uh, followed by a short panel discussion by some experts that have a particular insight into, into water bird monitoring in the region and then there will be, uh, that will be followed up with a discussion. So hopefully in an hour and a half we can get uh, a substantial amount of, of discussion in on the subject. Okay, well, if anyone is interested in the IUCN situation analysis of water birds in, in, in uh, intertidal areas in the East Asian Australasian Flyway, there are, there are copies over by the door. Um, so first, let me introduce the first speaker, which is Professor uh, Lee ki from the Korean Association of, for the Conservation of Nature, who also works as part of the Korean Water Bird Network and is a well-known expert in, in black-faced spoonbill and crates, as well as other species in um, Korea and in the East Asian region.
Monday, uh, the Korean Association for the Conservation of Nature. I talk about the motion on international cooperation for water monitoring to support travel management. I briefly uh, talk about the uh, background, purpose, content, and motion. Uh, first, I talk about the background. Many of water body populations are decreased or extinct, and only 10% are in Asia. The situation of other parts of the world, including Africa and South America, is mostly in Asia. And national and local monitoring of marital births are conducted, but continental or regional wide monitoring uh, and exchange of information are not enough in defense. We need to enhance the international monitoring of water birth population uh, to support the wetland system and the monitor the environmental exchanges. Uh, the purpose is conducting the international census of water birth population by the schemes of worldwide monitoring and the strengthening of the international cooperation uh, for some main to wetland ecosystem and to support to mitigate the biodiversity reduction. The context of motion and the preamble and the operant paragraphs is the main text. Uh, the preamble including the managing target 12 of H diversity 2020 and others. Uh, first, uh, we think about the target uh, 12 of H biodiversity targets. Uh, 2020, the extinction of non threatened species has been prevented and the conservation status, particularly of those most in decline, such as this uh, Spongy Set Pipe, uh, have, have been improved and sustained. And you should note that both have been used to assess and monitor the environment throughout history, and that both are one of the best, and in some cases, the only indicators of the environmental changes. And you can recognize that the state of water population is the least favorable in Asia. There are 16% of known populations are decreasing or extinct, and only 10% are increasing, as well as in other parts of the world, including Africa and South America, is similar to in Asia. You can concern that basic threat to the migrant world and resident water birth have been increasing. The basic threats uh, are such as the habitat fragmentation, uh, loss of wetland, and transformation of natural landscapes, etc. And we can recognize that reliable and updated data on water world is necessary to inform, improve the management of wetlands to maintain and support ecosystem services provided by wetlands. And we can note that the international water birth census and the religious schemes could provide the best global basis of, for estimating population size and trends of the water birth populations. It will provide that the coverage of these schemes uh, is improved. And we can recognize the role of civil society. They, uh, uh, they, they can uh, make the important role in broad scale environmental data collections. And we can also recognize that the goal of the IUCN species survival commission's strategic plan is a shared responsibility, resulting in action to reduce this loss of diversity within spaces, of spaces, and of ecosystems. <coughs> so I can talk about operant paragraphs and action that include encouragement of IUCN to ensure the international monitoring of water was and others. <coughs> First operant target one uh, encourages the IUCN membership and others to ensure that water birth populations worldwide are covered by international monitoring schemes and that are appropriate both in their scope and method to produce reliable international population size and threat estimates. And it requests IUCN uh, through its members and others to provide a global platform 
to strengthen development and implementation of appropriate regional flyway schemes, structures to secure necessary resources required to implement the coordinated water monitoring programs. It supports the enhancement of national and regional network capacities to undertake field monitoring of water bus on ongoing and long-term basis. <coughs> it strengthens existing mechanisms for enhanced and timely reporting of the suitable water port populations to support conservation measures, including management of wetland. It encourages the IUCN members to provide financial resources for water load monitoring and to participate in the monitoring programs within their privates. It invites relevant global and regional organizations, including the Convention on Biological Diversity, Convention on Biological Spaces, Ramsar Convention, the East Asia Australian Flyway Partnership, Agreement on the Conservation of African Eurasian Migratory Water Bus, Western Hemisphere Migratory Spaces Initiatives to support strengthening of existing schemes within the flyways. It details the Director General of IUCN within available resources to provide technical assistance to support national and regional activities and to report to the sixth section of the World Conservation Congress Congress <coughs> in this regard. Uh, this is a co-sponsors National Police Division, Institute of Women in Korea, and Veteran International, World Life International, the Equal Society of Korea, Korea Veteran Society, the Korean Society of Environment and Nicolas, National Society of Singapore, Vital Trust Bangladesh, Korean National History Society, and Malaysian National Society. But we need uh, your help. Uh, we have to do, I think we have to do something for uh, water about monitoring. Uh, I need your main help and suggest. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Lee, for, for that presentation. And certainly, I hope that, that we uh, will all be able to support this actually very important motion. I was very happy to see the recognition uh, in, the, in the slide about the recognizing the role of civil society in, in collecting data and, and using data. I think that what we've seen particularly in this region in, in recent years is kind of a burgeoning of local uh, environmental groups, bird watching groups, uh, who are starting to collect a lot of very valuable and timely data that, that could be very effective if it's, if it's harnessed in the right way, if it's a framework for its use. Um, to actually inform management decisions and, and even wider policy decisions. So I'm very happy to see that here. That's something that's, that's happening uh, very quickly in Asia with the, the, the development of bird clubs and, and, and individual bird watches. Uh, the next presentation is on international cooperation by Simba Chan. Simba Chan works for BirdLife Asia. <coughs> has a very extensive knowledge of, of the water birds in the region. He's been working here for a long, long time uh, with BirdLife and other organizations. And his presentation is on international cooperation in water bird life. <coughs> Maybe I should illustrate um, a kind of monitoring by well uh, on a single species, which is quite successful, and also it shows that well uh, bird monitoring can actually well provide us well, more than just data. We can actually build up networks. We can actually improve, achieve some conservation. 
And for spy, actually, the mention that I had working for so many years, I, I started very young. Well, um, I worked for so many years in, uh, in, the, in, the, in the waterway conservation things. And uh, one of the uh, case study that I um, that, that I think is very good it's a very good case study. Maybe in the future, textbooks uh, case study for Asia is a black face food meal conservation. So I would like to use the black face food meal uh, conservation and monitoring uh, to illustrate. Hope that in the future we will have a similar uh, successful stories. So black face food meal. Maybe uh, I'm not sure. Maybe you may not be familiar with this species. It is uh, the bird on the poster that we were maybe were on the book and also outside. Um, this is a bird that well the IUCN well status. Um, it is now regarded as endangered. But about 20 years ago, it was regarded as critically endangered. It's one of the successful well, stories that a critically endangered species now down low, um, I mean downgraded into endangered. And the global population is about around two to three thousand birds. Uh, we know it very well, well because we have a very good well, uh, monitoring system. So we know the population of these species and the increase of this season uh, of this uh, bird. So on the map here, the red dots are the known breeding ground of the blackface spoonbill. It is you see that it is a, basically a bird found in Eastern Asia. Uh, the main breeding ground is uh, on the western side of the Korean Peninsula. And uh, with some breeding, breeding population off the coast of Yangmin province in China and also some breeding in uh, Russia. And their wintering ground are all illustrated uh, on uh, yellow, uh, yellow spots. You see they are all over uh, the Yellow Sea, East China Sea and South China Sea in Japan, China, Vietnam and also the uh, island of Taiwan, Hong Kong, Macau and these uh, well, I sometimes I would say that I have a joke that this spoonbill it winters in all those chopstick countries. Yeah, in these countries are all by using chopsticks. <laughs> so before 1990s, uh, black face spoon was actually very little known. Not many people are aware of what a black face spoon bill was. So um, at that time, a member of the Hong Kong Birdwing Society, uh, Mr. Peter Kennedy, uh, he compiled some information on the black face spoon bill and he could only find uh, there was uh, there were less than three hundred birds in the world. Uh, before then, nobody had a clue of how well, how many blackface bluebill uh, were there in the world. And at that time, also the, some of the bird watchers, as well, Spike said, that well, uh, in the eighties we start to have some bird watching activities in Asia, in Asian countries. Some bird watchers in Taiwan they found that there are some blackface bluebill about a hundred or so wintering at the site in Thailand, in southern Taiwan. And the site was actually a site designated to be established as an industrial well, uh, well, uh, estate. It was decided to be well an industrial estate. So when this information broke out, well, uh, the conservationists said, no, we have, uh, we have to protect more than half of the world population of black faced windmill. But some of the local landowners in Taiwan, they were not very happy about it. So there were some unhappy incidents. Even some local people in Taiwan, uh, they shot dead uh, one or two black faced in the well, back in 1992. I have to keep the story short. I know that I only have 15 minutes. Well, but then since then, well, uh, the conservation is getting together and hope to protect the black faced windmill, just like the conservation is getting together, hope to protect, uh, hope to conserve the Spoonbill Sandpiper now. Uh, but like international and other organizations, we get it together. We have some meeting in Beijing and also in Tokyo back in 1996 uh, and 1997. And that was quite an achievement because we could brought all those well, Cold War countries people together, like North and South Korea. Well, uh, they are all, uh, all brought together to discuss uh, some of the actions need to be done. There was a lot of well, very uh, active well, uh, discussion on the, what we should do on the concept of conserving the black spoon. You see the picture taken in 1996. One of the activities that uh, were suggest is we have to find out how many black spoon are there in the world. Where are they, how many, and the trend. Whether they are increasing or decreasing. 
So we started to have a coordinated count of the blackface windmill in the winter, in the, in the wintering ground. Uh, because the breeding ground is very difficult. They, at that time, we know the major breeding ground is in North Korea, which is very difficult for, uh, to census uh, the number of the birds. So we do it well. So we actually did it in the wintering ground. That means in Japan, in Hong Kong, in well, uh, Taiwan, in Vietnam, and also some coastal countries in well, some coastal provinces in well, in China. They all come at the same time. We have a coordinator. At first, we started uh, uh, because the the reason why we started this is because you look at the gentleman holding well, uh, uh, this photo down there, the, uh, the American gentleman, right, Mr. Tom Dimer. He was the one who started to collect some information on the uh, on the census of Black Race Union back in 1993. He done a little bit and then he joined our uh, our group and we started to have uh, to have a. Uh, uh, Monitoring of the whole of the black backs will be all over the region. 